On behalf of two all-party parliamentary groups, the all-party parliamentary group on Hong Kong, which you are chair, co-chair of, Natalie, uh, and which I'm vice chair of, and also the all-party parliamentary group on freedom of religion or belief. And it's wonderful to see Fiona Bruce, member of parliament, the prime minister's special envoy on form on, on the call. Um, on behalf of those two APPGs, I'm particularly pleased to open this meeting on uh, religious repression in Hong Kong with Pastor Roy Chan as our, our speaker. His church in Hong Kong has had its bank account frozen. Uh, he's personally had to move to London with his wife and young children. And we'll look forward to hearing from you, Pastor Roy, about some of the personal experiences that you have had, but also others uh, from your own background in, in Hong Kong. But the setting for today's meeting, Natalie, is also, of course, last week's outrageous arrest of a 90-year-old man, a holy and, and venerable man, Cardinal Joseph Zen, but also his fellow trustees, Margaret Ung, whom I know personally, and extraordinary, she's a remarkable barrister, lawyer, but others, uh, some of faith, some of no faith. The treatment of these people underlines the nature of the Chinese Communist Party and uh, their apparatchiks in Hong Kong. And it's extraordinary, really, I think it underlines the fear of the CCP of pr probably the one remaining uh, freedom in Hong Kong, and that is religious freedom. And given John Lee and Carrie Lam claim an affiliation to one of the churches, uh, they should recall that Henry II also tried to rid himself of a, an awkward prelate, and that didn't end well, and I don't believe this will either. And for that matter, of course, Mao Zedong incarcerated Shanghai's bishop, later Cardinal Kung, and on my very first visit to mainland China as a young MP in 1981, I went to some deserted land with a colleague. We, we stood in, on some barren land looking at a window where we were told that a man might be able to appear that evening as he often did at sunset. He was under, then under house arrest. He'd spent decades in prison. And that was then the, the former Bishop of Shanghai uh, who was made in Pectoria Cardinal, Cardinal Kung. And I think that the persecution of Kung, of Zen, um, she's current imprisonment of Henan's Bishop, Wei Zhu. Uh, and it's good to see the Bishop of Guildford on, on our call today. I know who's taking a real interest in issues around freedom of religion or belief. But alongside the persecution of Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhist, today, for instance, is the anniversary of the abduction of the Panchen Lama, who I guess was the youngest hu human rights prisoner ever, age six when he was abducted, his whereabouts are, are unknown. But also the treatment of Falun Gong, which just passed a measure through both houses of parliament, but pioneered really in, in the House of Lords, specifically about organ tourism and the uh, killing of, of of uh, Falun Gong practitioners in order to have access to their organs. But then we think of the genocide of, of the Uyghur Muslims. So all these things are part of the fear that the Chinese Communist Party has of religion and religious belief, but it hasn't destroyed it. If anything, it's deepened it. And more fool those appeasers who have made secret deals and concordats, which I think are a little better than the concordat with the Reich in 1933. There are 30 articles in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 18, which the All Party Group on Freedom of Religion or Belief has as one of its core motivation factors. It described it once as an orphaned right. Article 18 insists on the right to believe, the right not to believe, and the right also to change belief. But it's hard to think of any of the 30 articles in the Universal Declaration that aren't breached on a daily basis by the Chinese Communist Party. I guess I hope that arising out of this joint meeting today, that we will call out the Chinese Communist Party who sit, as ironically, as the United Kingdom does on the United Nations Human Rights Council. When did we last call out these breaches? And also, and I'll end here, the government has at its disposal the Magnitsky sanctions regime and the ability to introduce a Hong Kong specific sanctions list, which would enable ministers to target individuals responsible for these egregious violations rather than entire countries. And we might well ask today, when will those powers be used to target people like Lee and Lam and others identified as responsible for the illegal destruction of two systems, one country? And to inform this debate, we can't, we wouldn't have anyone better, I think, than Pastor Roy Chan to, to inform us and to elucidate some of the points that I've just made. 
So Natalie, thank you for asking me to make some introductory comments. I hope that sets the scene. Now over to you, Pastor Roy. Uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, uh, please forgive me my horrible English because my English is very horrible. I'm really sorry about that. But uh, uh, thank you for, for all of your invitation. As uh, I will have a little bit share about um, uh, what happened or the, the the situation in Hong Kong, the religious freedom and and the role. Anything else have some 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 problem over there. Uh, my my experience, I'm also maybe I might I, I can share my my background first. Uh, and, uh, my church in Hong Kong named Good Neighbor North District Church. We are the church uh, for the gospel and the charity work, but we still are keeping on uh, fighting for the grassroots uh, human rights, something like that. Um, I may share that um, the Hong Kong situation they restrict to just two points. The first point is uh, <clears throat> now. As the reason of the the red line, the the national security law, uh, they have such kind of restriction. First of all, is the charity work. First of all, is the charity work. Um, my church, Good Neighbor North District Church, um, because uh, uh, we are frozen, the, the froze the, the account has 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 been frozen by HSBC during uh, two o two o December the sixth of December. Um, on that day, the Hong Kong policemen prosecuted uh, church staff for the money laundering. They arrest uh, the church accounting staff and uh, we, we signed a uh, director and even they want to uh, arrest me and my wife because me and my wife, at that moment, we are, we are arrived in, in, in London. But all of our account frozen uh, affect our, our church uh, uh, the, the 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 money and also for our our account my 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 uh, li, uh, my, my 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 money also restricted so that um because good neighbor North Teachic Church during uh in two o one nine to two o two one uh we are always been practicing the mission of the gospel during the social movement uh, that began in June two o one nine we were committed to help young people in need, such as set up, set, setting up a Protect the Children, a volunteer team to provide humanitarian support at the demonstration site, and also we providing employment support and food and psychological counseling, something like that. So, uh, but they frozen our, our account, and we no money to do anything, and they, just blame on us. We are the money laundering to stop the people, to threaten the people who donate for us. As such kinds of the reason, we want to do some charity work to support some, some people who, who need, but we no money to do. So that's why when we are uh, at, at uh, uh, on June uh, 2021, we need to close the, uh, the, the church because uh, we feel very threatened about uh, the, the, the director, the trustee, and also we no money to do the church to, to support uh, any charity work, any young people, even some grassroots people. So, so first of all is uh, the restrict and the collapse of, uh, because the national security law, we can't do the charity work. And second, um, as the reason of national security law, um, now, in, uh, uh, not only um, what the written by the church and also the speech or the sermon of the church leader, they have a big restriction. That means they have the threaten in speech freedom. Uh, what I wanted to tell all of you is that uh, some of the uh, pastor, not only me, some famous pastor in Hong Kong, they also need to run away from, escape from Hong Kong and go to, um, I may introduce one to two case, you may know, you may, you may know about the situation. For example, uh, a pastor called, uh, named uh, uh, Wing Sin Nern. Uh, he is a, a mega church in, in Hong Kong, a former pastor, Remembrance of Grace Church. And one time, uh, he do a sermon. After the sermon, somebody go into their church, threaten them a few times. 
justice, the people said, I will, uh, I will uh, tell the policeman to arrest you because the national security law and also you do something anti-government. So I will find somebody, maybe will, will, I will, will, will hurt your family member. That's why Pastor Wing Xin Leung, he feel threatened. So he also think about, he can't say anything about the political situation in Hong Kong. He feel threatened and his family also feel threatened so that he need to go to the UK uh, for in, Gen in February 2021. He is one of the very famous pastor in Hong Kong. And also in April 2021, another pastor named Heng Choi Law. He is the ex-president of the Baptist, Con Con Baptist Convention of Hong Kong. He always written a lot of articles about anti-extra decision law um, since the beginning of the social movement on on uh, um, after the uh, imp implementation of national security law he suddenly quit his job his uh his uh the, the president of the baptist convention because he said it is very threatening for him even even like because he don't want to arrest by the Hong Kong policeman as the reason of National security law, security law, and he, he moved it to the UK during the April of 2021. And also, um, and I, 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 in, in June of uh, 2021, they have a small church uh, named El Calicia, Hong Kong. It's a, it's a very small church, just about 10 people, but this church were very active. In social movement, not only in in two o one nine, about six to seven years, to fight for the freedom, always join the and a lot of protests. Uh, in the June of uh two o two one, El Calicia Hong Kong pastor and Kong Kong also pointed out that um due to the political changes, it was uh, difficult. Uh, to uh, to assess his risk, and he was worried that that the operation of the church as a limited company would implicate others. It is hence the second disbanded church under the effect of national security law. That is the restrict about uh, the present about oh. what they are speaking, what they are doing about the about the political reason. And also, one very important uh, thing happened in, on September 2021. They have a big network called Hong Kong Pastors Network. Uh, this pastor network do uh, uh, multiple times of prayers and assemblies during the social movement. And also, they have published the Hong Kong 2020 gospel declaration. But after the national security law have, uh, came into effect, this declaration was accused by the state-owned media named Tai Kong Pao. Uh, that on the, on the Tai Kong Pao, the newspaper said they are against the, uh, they are against the national security law. The main writer, including Tata King King Kang Yang, who has passed away, and also Pastor Siu Yong Wong. They also have already uh, arrived in Taiwan. Then the Hong Kong Pastor Network has been disbanded. So uh, you may notice that um, a lot of the church and uh, they what they are written, what in their sermon. In 2022 now, they, they need to double check by themselves because they are afraid about to reach and condemn by national security law. That's why they have a big restriction about the speech freedom. They didn't want, don't want to talk any more about the political situation, the Hong Kong situa situation, and anything that is disagreed uh, with the Hong Kong government. 
and the last week that have a big issue. Uh, we we noticed that uh, the 90, 92 years old uh, the uh, Catholic bishop Cardinal uh, Joseph Chen. Um, he is the trustee of Six One Two Foundation. Um, uh, this organization that have the humanitarian support for the Hong Kong young people during the social movement. They also arrested by the uh, national security law. Um, as the reason they are affiliated and and they are all, uh, they are they are the friends of the uh, foreigner. Uh, they are supported by the foreigner who who anti the CCP something like that. In the Hong Kong government, not only uh, Johnny, not only Carrie Lam, the chief executive, they always said we don't do anything to restrict the religious. We have religious freedom. But what I wanted to tell all of us is that they do do something to restrict the charity work. You do any charity work to support the people, anti-government, you are also condemned by the money laundering. Just my church case. Second, anything who say something about anti-government, they also will arrested by the national security law. They don't say anything. They are, just like in the this morning, Carrie Lam, uh, some press asked them, do you, because Carrie Lam also is a Christian, and the, the press asked them, will you pray for uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph Chen, uh, the ca ca cardinal, uh, Joseph Chen, he, she don't say anything. She just say, so somebody who, re who condemned by, uh, they need to uh, uh, rule by law. They, uh, I don't care about their background, any religious, something like that. Because they won't say in something where that is, I will restrict the freedom of religious, but they will restrict what you're telling, what you're doing. So it seems like they are in the, some, some kind of human right. Uh, we, are, we are doing the right thing in the human right, let the people have a religious freedom, but they will use another reason to restrict you and arrest you. Just like uh, 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 Joseph Chen, the 19 years old man, uh, because uh, they just doing the, 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 the money, the, the crime of money, uh, the national security law, uh, you you have the friend you you supported by the foreigner. The, the reason not is not is the religious, but you just do something anti-government. That is the big restriction about our uh, uh, the, the 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 church role because they will lesser effect affect the, the community. They can't say anything. Uh, fight for justice. Fight for human rights, and they can't do the charity work to support the people who are needed. For example, somebody who are uh, uh, anti-government, you can't do it. Uh, uh, they said, uh, uh, they won't speak loudly that you are anti-government, you, um, you are a political reason, but they will find some, some way to tell you that uh, in your account, there has some problem. You are money laundering. They won't say anything to restrict the, re the freedom of religious. That is another way, you know what I mean? Another way to restrict your religious freedom because in the Bible, we need to act justice. We need to do something right. We need to say some wording, some, some opinion that if the government do something wrong. So, uh, but in the Bible, we also tell them that we need to remind the people who do something wrong. But what I'm telling the background about these two years, the co collapse of the religious freedom. Uh, now, Hong Kong church, the pastor, the leader, they are also less uh, what they can do. They, they can't do anything more. They feel very threatened about it. So it um, seems like the situation is deteriorating, is bad, is worse. So, um, but the, the quite interesting thing or maybe quite bad thing, quite evil thing is that they won't say I'm restrict, restricting or condemning your religious freedom, but they're doing very detailed. Just use another reason and to restrict the religious freedom. Uh, <laughs> and I apologize for my horrible English, but uh, what I'm sharing is I hope all of us will notice that 
uh, what situation uh, deteriorating about the uh, freedom of religion in Hong Kong. The situation is like that. That is what I may share. We, we may have furthermore discussion. Thank you. So thank you very much, Pastor Chan. And that was extremely clear um, and, of course, deeply disturbing. Um, you, you're speaking to people who are representatives in various ways of the nation that's the signatory to the joint declaration, which is supposed to be protecting all of those rights. So thank you very much for all that you've done and all that you're doing to get the word out. Uh, I want to open the floor now for questions um, to, I don't think Alastair has joined us yet since we're all tag teaming a little here. Um, uh, so I don't know if anyone either wants to type um, their desire to ask a question in the chat or use the raised hand function um, uh, to, um, and Chris, I think will help me if there's any um, hands I miss, because I can't see everyone at once. Um, but if anyone would like to ask a question, um, I know we have a, a number of parliamentarians on the call and also staff of parliamentarians, I'm very open to questions from staff of parliamentarians, if you can perhaps just identify where you're coming from uh, to make things a little bit easier. Um, perhaps just to kick things off, um, I will ask a question while people are thinking about other questions. And I, I, I will ask this with the preface that feel free not to answer it if you don't feel that you can. But the question I would ask you is what do you think the UK can and should be doing um, in reaction to the events that you've described what indeed perhaps, uh, not speaking for anyone else on this call, but what could churches um, and other religious groups in the UK be doing? What, what do you see might be effective to protect people or, or help people? Pastor Chan, if I can ask you that. Okay, I I'm, I'm apologize again, my horrible English, and also maybe I, I'm, I, I need to uh, make clear about the question. First of all, is that uh, how the church in the UK, maybe help help the Hong Kong church, something like that. This is a more, more easy question. What what why I I said uh, uh so easy for 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 the answer is that uh, I think the UK church is very welcome, do a lot of things to welcome the the the, the Hong Kong Christian the pastor something like that. You know, after around two o two one, you have heard a organization called UKHK, a uh, Chris. Chris helped help me a lot. Uh, also, Benedict Roger helped me a lot. Uh, they helped us to have a new life, at the pay how UK life, and also a lot of church uh, rents to pay the place for the Hong Kong people worship. It, during the, the, the escape from, from Hong Kong to go to go to the UK. So that's, I think, uh, the Hong Kong, the UK church do a lot of things, have done a lot of things to welcome Hong Kong pastors. Um, you have asked another question is that how what what the uk government can do for the religious freedom something like that um uh in in fact uh a lot, last last few weeks i have attended another uh, conference in in parliament that is uh, speaking about the, uh, the the press freedom in in hong kong the situation something like that i i think we can have some reference about it because um uh, 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 I know that uh, as we will do a lot of sanctions. For example, when we start up the national security law, not only UK and also uh, 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 the, 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 the US also do a lot of sanctions for the, for the people who are doing the national security law. For example, sanction for Kerry Lam, sanction for the, the, the head of policemen, something like that, okay? But it seems like um, we may do maybe a month of sanction for for the for the for the Hong Kong officer who who doing such kind of thing of religious, um, and also a voice out uh, for the situation in in the net in 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 the parliament also in the uh, United Nations something like that. As uh, yes, in the today the news report also carry them out that I won't restrict the the religious freedom. But you know, uh, uh, Joseph Chen, he now arrested by the security law, is the, the real thing. But they, they are very evil. They say, I don't uh, restrict any uh, freedom of the religious. But 
the content, what we are doing is, is the re religious thing. We need to act the justice, we need to speak in the, uh, in the community what they are doing. So I think maybe more sanction in, for the, the, the Hong Kong officer, some, somebody who are uh, uh, affiliated about the religious affair in Hong Kong, um, because not only not only uh, Cardinal uh, Joseph Chen, and also in fact one pastor just arrested at last month in in by the reason of national security law, with security law called Pastor uh, uh, Yun Mun Peng. Uh, he is a very not famous pastor, but because he 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 uh, uh, feel, he says some words support the the Hong, Hong Kong young people in the court, when there's somebody who, who arrested by, by, by uh, go to the court in the social movement, then he also arrested by the national security law. That is, the, 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 we, we read the news about the Hong Kong situation, every day arrested some, not only the, 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 the Hong Kong people, also it's for the pastor and also the church. So I think more sanction is more, that's great. We we need to we, we may we may let them to notice that you are doing something is re restricted about the religious freedom. Sanction about the, the office, the, about Hong Kong uh, religious affairs, the people. Yeah, I think it's a good good way. And also say more work in, in the United Nations because uh, uh, not uh, 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 I think uh, this is not uh, the same uh, popular way about the Hong Kong situation. Uh, we we are aware about it, but I think we can we can do a a a a, a more song about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I th I think that was that was very clear. Thank you very much. And I do just want to share that uh, David Lord Alton um, has had to leave us with his apologies because he's heading off to the meeting in the cabinet office. And it, it, a comment that he let put in the chat um, as we come to mark the 25th anniversary of the handover of Hong Kong on the 1st of July, I hope that we'll be able to do more uh, to highlight the breaches of Article 18. Um, ah, may, 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 may I yeah. say, say one more word? <laughs> I, I need to remember about it. The most important thing I may, may, may think that the UK government may do it, for example, for my situation, my own situation, my church uh, bank account, then also my own bank account and my wife's bank account, we have a bank account in HSBC. You have read about not only us, some whole democracy polit politician in Hong Kong, they also frozen they are kind of also frozen by the HSBC. In fact, our church, I asked some staff in, in HSBC, I, I, I talked talk with them directly. I said, you know what we are doing, uh, what, what we are spending, you must know about it. We do nothing about the, 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 the money laundering. For example, we buy the food for the people who need to eat, we pay for the, the, the young people uh, the, in, they are eating in the restaurant. You may, you must know about it. Why you said money laundry? In fact, HSBC also has their business in UK, but nowadays they are still running. I have uh, helped by Benedict Roger. We have uh, make a connection, contact with the, the the HSBC in UK. They said, oh, we need to obey the law in East Asia, obey the law in Hong Kong. But they also doing something that is they are running their business on the Hong Kong people. They they are running on the, the blood of the Hong Kong people. Do you know what I mean? It, it's very horrible, you know. They are still running the, the their business and say ah, we are very good. We are doing some charity work. We are helping the UK people. But they are they are condemned or they are they have a destroy in not only human right. They now it's a practically uh, do, uh, do the bad thing, they destroy the religious freedom because we, 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 we frozen the account, Good Neighbor Church, North District Church in, in Hong Kong. We have no money to do the charity work. In fact, our church not only support the Hong Kong young people, we have free accommodation, providing 20 beds for the homeless. We need to stop. And the homeless, no, no home to go. Uh, they are in Hong Kong now. I have also have a direct contact with the homeless. 
they said, we are still very disappointed. I also feel very disappointed. This, this is 2022 now. The HSBC do nothing. And also they no need to pay about anything, including not only Hong Kong, in also, in also in UK. Benedict Rogers also feel very angry about it. They, they, he do a lot of things, find the people in the, in the, in the, in the, in the UK HSBC to help me to, we, 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 to, 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 to spread the idea. But they said, oh, I just obey the law. It's a tricky, it is evil. They also is the helper to restrict the religious freedom and human rights. I think the Hong Kong, the UK government must do something practically, restrict and, and sanction and, and, and restrict their business and condemn them. They need to be frozen out. I can't, they have some re connection. They, they, you know, I know a lot of Hong Kong people, they use the, the money transfer through the Hong Kong HSBC to UK HSBC. They can use the ATM machine to give the money. How come they said no connection and we need to restrict the law? I think the UK government may help, but in fact, my, my money, the last salary of, of my money still frozen. In, in fact, I, nowadays I help some help by the Hong Kong people and the UK people donate donate the e-voucher, the supermarket e-voucher for me to eat. And now that I need to using it. I also know money. That is the, 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 the real case now me. I'm also frozen by the HSBC. I think HSBC has, has their big responsibility and UK government maybe can do something practical. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And I think that was an extremely important point. And I do note that as Chris from our secretariat has noted in the chat, that the Hong Kong uh, all-party parliamentary group will be publishing a report on banking in Hong Kong and issues around environmental, social and governance issues um, uh, regarding the such British banks. So that's something that will be coming in the fairly near future. And yes, I do know, Chris, I have some, some work to do on that. Um, rather than just keeping hearing from me, um, I wonder, Andrew, Bishop of Guildford, whether there's any questions you'd like to make or any, indeed any comments in terms of what's happening and, and the links between Hong Kong and, and British churches, etc. Thanks. Thank you. I notice Andy has his hand up, so so I, I'm I'm happy to jump the queue. But Andy, after after me, um, really good to to hear from Roy. Actually, we met up in um, up in Birmingham about uh, yeah. two weeks ago, and I was speaking at the Birmingham Spring Convention, and Roy was uh, shared some of his. Uh, cross-cultural experiences and moving to this country and having to to cook with that and a nice a big flame to to cook on and it was very it was great he gave a very very good um picture of that and also just the seriousness of the situation in hong kong um and my interest in this my my, my grandparents were were missionaries in china between the wars um and um uh, and I've been out to China several times um, uh, and met up with Christians there and seen the extraordinary challenges, really, and just the way that persecution can break out in unexpected places at unexpected times. Um, and then things go quiet and then it all blows off again. Um, and my parents, actually, my father was um, in charge of a music academy house in Hong Kong, uh, just over the sort of handover. The, the 25 years ago, I suppose, over over the time when it was being handed back. So I do think making the most of that 25th anniversary to, to highlight and flag up um, some of these human rights abuses and, and, and the FORB implications, you know, does seem a really important thing to be doing, um, as well as the very practical stuff about unfreezing bank accounts. And, you know, it seems extraordinary that a bank that, that has such a big operation in this country is is um is uh, is still doing that. Um, I suppose my my sort of point or 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 maybe question, but you know, in a way that, that the Chinese Communist Party on and off has been seeking to undermine and um, uh, a faith uh, for such a long time, and yet it seems to have had the opposite effect, certainly in the Christian Church in China, which has grown, you know. 40-fold since my grandparents left in 1938. Um, and it just makes me, me wonder why, you know, why this tactic is still deployed when it seems to be so extraordinarily counterproductive. Um, fairly basic sort of observation, but, um, but just one that I thought I'd bring. 
but Andy's got his hand up, so I'm sure. Okay, well, perhaps if we can let Pastor Chan answer that, then we'll come to Andy if that's okay. Thanks. Pastor Chan, if you could answer that question about why the the um, the Chinese Communist Party has so, for so long tried to repress religion when there is um, it keeps failing. Um, and what, what the sort of driving force and, and what the counter reaction is. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry, my, maybe my English is very horrible. Uh, and it, it, uh, it, you mean that uh, why the communists uh, do such kind of thing to restrict the, uh, the freedom of religion? Is it? I, th I think that's almost it, Roy, but also, you know, this this policy of seeking to destroy or undermine faith has so manifestly failed for the best parts of 100 years, where the, the church in China has, has grown and other faith groups uh, have, if anything, been strengthened by it. And, and it sort of feels that this policy continues to persist. And we were just wondering whether you had any insight why that might be. Uh, because uh, I, I'm not sure I get the, the, the question clear or not, but I think, um, as, you know, not only Hong Kong, in the mainland China, in the, in, in the inside of China, uh, they, within these four to five years, they have done a lot of things to condemn the church, you know. Uh, you know, nowadays in, in the mainland China, the church needs to read the, the, the dialogue, the teaching about the thinking. First of all, and second, uh, you, you may um, worship to God. But the first thing is you, you need to study about what teaching about the thinking, the president of, of China. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think they are, they are really afraid about the Christianity. They are speaking something justly. They know that the Bible teaching, what is human rights, what is uh, freedom, what is do the thing right. Uh, in, in the, uh, before, uh, five years before, uh, Hong, uh, in the mainland China, they have a place called, uh, named Wan Zhao, Wan Zhao, where uh, they have a name called the China Jerusalem. There is a lot of mission over there in Wan Zhao. Um, uh, because a lot of, a lot of church in, in the mainland China, the CCP have found that maybe the cross, the church, or the, the flag of the church, the, the cross of the church, more than the flag of the, the Chinese, the China government. You know what I mean? They're afraid about it. They feel very worried about it. We, one day, the church member will more, they will, the member will be more than the CCP, the member of CCP. That's why uh, around five years before, or maybe six years before, they condemned the church, destroy the church, arrest the pastor without any reason. They said, uh, 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 your, your church will be, uh, uh, will be controlled, or maybe the, the building of the church now is government. You need to go out. A lot of stories uh, happened. They destroyed the cross, destroyed the church, used the, 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 do it brutally, and something like that. And nowadays, I uh, not not I'm not joking. They are teaching the they need to read the, the Bible of Xi Jinping teaching before the worship. They sing the national song before the worship. Then after and then then worship you 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 may you may you may worship your your, your Bible, something like that, your God, something like that. I I I, I have a uh, I discussed with some uh, as philological school teachers. They also think about, they are afraid about one day, uh, the church member, the Christianity, the Christian, maybe they are, have a big power than the communist, so that they need to condemn it. They need to control it. Um, the history of the CCP, the communists, the Chinese communists, they are, in fact, uh, in 1940 something years, one nine or thirty something years. They have their own, their own position. They have occupation. You know what? Most of them, their occupation, their occupation of CCP is a farmer. 
a grassroots people. Do you know, understand what I mean? They're the, the grassroots worker. Because on that time, the, the Chinese government is bad. They have no power. So the farmer, the, co- the worker, the grassroots, they join together and are better, they are learned from USSR. They join together to form the communists in the in in the grassroots in the farm in the farmland. They they join together fight for their freedom. They fight for their their rights because on that moment in one nine thirty one nine one nine two something years they are abused by the the rich people. They notice that they that they got the union. They have a big power. In in the last ten years. And said one child, not only one child. Uh, you have heard, read about the one uh, pastor in, in China named uh, Yi Wang, Wang Yi. Uh, his church, uh, because uh, in Cheng, Chengdu, uh, uh, I don't know if it, it, it's uh, the church English name, but their church is a big church, about 100, 200 people in, 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 in Chengdu, in the south, south, uh, southwest part of, uh, of, of, of China. They also always speak and fight for the, uh, the June 4th accident. Do you know what accident in, in, in Beijing one night, 89? They have a, a, a mass massacre. Kill a lot of uh, 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 university students, amounts of uh, students in, in Beijing. Uh, because the, the, the students fight for the freedom in one night, eight night, 4th of June. The pastor, Wang Yi, Yi Wang, he say a lot of words during the sermon fight for the freedom, fight for the transit for the force of you. You know, in 2019 or 2018, Pastor Wong arrested by the Chinese government, CCP, as the reason they have the threaten about the national security reasons. They have, they, he need to put in the jail for 10 years. CCP noticed that Christianity, they fight for, they will fight for freedom. They will fight for justice. I think this is the main idea. They are afraid. They they feel threatened. The Christianity. So, so they will control the religious. I don't know. Is it, I I'm answered the right way. Sorry. Thank you, Pastor, um, for for explaining the paranoia of the Chinese Communist Party, which I think is what it boils down to. Uh, I've usurped the chair's position just for a few minutes because uh, the chair disappeared off the screen. So I'll just call. Uh, Andy Bailey to contribute because he's waited patiently with his hand up and then hand straight back to you, Nat. Uh, thank you. Um, just a couple of questions more. Uh, um, feel free to answer these on, on a wider one. So if anyone's got any particular insight on these, I'd be really interested. Uh, the first first one is um, on Magnitsky sanctions and um, uh, our our sanction legislation is very similar to uh, what is to the US, um, which is key as the US has sanctioned uh, nine individuals in Hong Kong over human rights crackdowns, uh, yet the UK hasn't. So I was wondering if there is any um, steps we can be taking. Uh, sorry, I should have introduced myself. Um, I, um, Andy Bailey, I, I work for the APPG on Forbes, um, along with Portia, I'm part of the Secretariat for that. And just looking at these individuals who are who are sanctioned by the US and not by the UK, are there steps we can be taking to ensure the British government has uh, the evidence that the US government needs to, to sanction those? And then secondly, um, with the arrest of Cardinal Zen, uh, Vatican has been very um, cautious about criticising uh, the CCP for, for many reasons, particularly for... Uh, fear of crackdown on on, uh, Roman Catholics in mainland China. However, with the arrest of Cardinals on on Thursday, they made one of, uh, made a very strong statement against that. Does this mark a change in um, Vatican's relationship to the UN? Do we expect to see uh, a greater uh, stance from them in the future? Over to you, Pastor Chen. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe the question I can pardon or not. I'm sorry, my English is horrible. 
I, I think to if if I can summarize, one was about what the future relationship between the Vatican and and China uh, looks like in the context of Hong Kong, um, and the earlier one I think was was the sanctions regime and the UK and the US sanction regime and and how they look from your perspective, um, Andy. I don't know if that was a, that was a fair. Jump in if you don't think that was a fair summary, but that was my summary of the questions. Andy, yeah, you're on mute. Uh, yeah, that, that was a fair summary. I would say with the sanctions one, if anyone on, on the call has thoughts as well, please jump in. So over to you, Pastor Chan, if, if that was clear. So it's about US and UK sanctions and what the relationship between the Vatican and the and China looks like. <laughs> you mean is it? Uh, you mean that uh, maybe more sanction about uh, this issue? Um, I guess the, the, the more sanctions and perhaps the, the type of sanctions. A anything you'd like to say? You can also say you've 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 said quite a bit on this already. So if you say you've said everything, that's fine too. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, you, you know, uh, some, somebody just like Burma. I, 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 I raised another example. Some country, in fact, a sanction is, um, is a good way to present as a gesture about what we are stand for. But you know, some country, they don't really agree about the sanction. Just like Burma, you know, you know we have amounts of sanction about them that say, I don't really care about it. I think sanction is, a, is a, the most important gesture and the presentation about uh, where, where we see this issue is very important. And also, maybe we, we, we may think more aggressively about, and I, I don't know, just uh, look very silly and crazy ideas. For example, you do some CCP doing something as restricting about the, the, the religious freedom, human rights, something like that. Could, could we do something uh, restriction about the training? In between UK and, and mainland China, I, I think this is very difficult. You, you know, uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, uh, earn money is important," because uh, in in fact, last month in the March, uh, in in the Mar on the March uh, of of last month, I uh, our church, including me, I ex member, we go to Rutan to do the human humanitarian support. We do about one month. We we. Totally agree about what the president of Ukraine uh, said. Uh, if you keep on trading with somebody who's doing evil things, we are just contributing trading upon above the the, 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 the the suffering people blood. You know what I mean? So, is it, can we do more things to stop trading? Relax, release the uh, 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 reduce the trading with the with the mainland China with the CCP. Because we notice that not only the religious freedom, they do very badly. This is all the all of them is a human human life. So we can we reduce the trading by lesser thing for the for the thing trading that is the product of made in China. In fact, uh, not only our church, a lot of Hong Kong people organization who are in 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 the UK, they do some education, just the community education to pro promote. All the UK citizens don't buy anything which is market made in China. This is what we are doing, the Hong Kong people promoting such kind of uh, movement. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not good in po political, but it is a really practical thing we can do, not only uh, do something uh, uh, in, the, in the physical world, but we can do uh, uh, something uh, uh, in the trade, in the economic way. And I have read uh, the dialogue box that one one question is that uh, and any any anything we can do in the digital world is it? I, I I'm I'm not clear about it. But the question is very good. Why I said this question is very good. Um. Uh. Just like the 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 war in Ukraine, after two months, as I said, at three months, the social media will will lesser lesser report about it. If we wanted to fight for the religious freedom for the Hong Kong people, we may we, we may do small uh, report, uh, we, uh, share more story, including me. In uh, amongst of pastors, they are arrived in in the in the UK. 
I, I, I told that uh, Pastor Wing Sin Na, Pastor Hing Choi Na, they also now in UK. We may do, do, do the reporting, so we will we'll, we'll report to share in the digital world. I think this is an advocacy work for the religious freedom for the Hong Kong people. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Sure. And I think that follows on, um, Portia, you had, a, there was a question in, in the chat, which I'm afraid I lost in my little technological disappearance. Um, I don't know if Portia, if you'd like to ask that question. Um, I think it follows on very nicely. Thank you. Yeah, no, it follows on very nicely. Thank you, Pastor Chan. Uh, yeah, I think that's part of partly already answered as in how can technology be both a force for good in terms of the response to the crackdown, but also the particular ways in which there is digital persecution of the church in Hong Kong and how that might require a more specific response due to the advancing technologies that are coming out and the increased surveillance that that brings with it. Um, but you did get already answer that partly, so thank you. I'm sorry that, uh, in fact, the, in, if we wanted to do digital way directly, you may do the interview with the pastor who are allowed in Hong Kong. But I wanted to tell you is that they are afraid about it. For example, we are now using the Zoom, right? You know, they have a bad report before about the Zoom software. The Hong Kong people will be very afraid about using the Zoom because they are selling some data to, to China. That's a report uh, uh, several, two years before. Uh, now, the pastor in Hong Kong, the church in Hong Kong, they close their mouth. They are afraid about what re writing on the Facebook, on the Twitter, something like that, because the Hong Kong policemen and the CCP, they reading. After they re reading something, write something word, they will arrest you at tomorrow morning at the evening, that is true. So I'm sorry that we may do something more, more directly to, to, to make an a interview with, or maybe they say something from the Hong Kong, but nowadays it's very, very difficult. It, it's so, so, so horrible. I feel very sad about it. Thank you. Um, Chair, if I might just make one comment because uh, Andy Bailey mentioned changing positions potentially within the Catholic Church. And I think that takes us nicely full circle as, the, as we approach the end of this meeting, because in his introductory remarks, Lord Alton made a passing reference, which from Lord Alton is um, the equivalent of a pickaxe handle to the back of the head, when he talks disparagingly of the concordat that some people have entered into with the Chinese Communist Party. He is there referring directly to the Pope and the policy of his foreign secretary. Um, and uh, I know that because it's discussions that Benedict and I have had with David on a number of occasions. And it's particularly frustrating, and I have written to the gentleman I'm going to name in a minute, about uh, Cardinal Zen, and that is Archbishop Paul Gallagher. He is the Secretary of State for the Holy See, Foreign Secretary for the Holy See. He is the first Englishman to hold that position in 2,000 years of the church's history. He also had the misfortune or the good fortune to be a curate in the constituency of David Alton when he was in the House of Commons. And this concordat to which they refer is that the way the church has, I'm actually going to say it sold its soul on this one, I think, is that it will only appoint bishops in China who have been prior approved by the Chinese Communist Party. The detail of that, that concordat is secret, but that is what it means in practice. It is shameful of me, for me to sit here as somebody who has not one, but two papal knighthoods to say that I disparage this policy, um, whether it's coming directly from Pope Francis or his foreign secretary, Archbishop Paul, um, it has no place in the public policies of the Catholic Church, so far as I am concerned. So I think Pastor Roy and I would agree on that. And as I say, since it was David's introductory remarks, it might be appropriate to say thank yous at the end of the meeting. Well, thank you very much, Chris. And I think that was very informative. I'm afraid we, we do try and restrict these to an hour because people uh, unfortunately have other meetings to go off to and we're all a bit tied up as has been shown by our slightly ad hoc chairing arrangements. Um, I must begin, first of all, with a huge thank you to Pastor Chan for your time today, 
for your very clear contribution that I think has given us all a great deal to think about and some action points to take away. Um, this has been a meeting, a joint meeting between the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Hong Kong and the APPG on International Freedom of Religion and Belief. Um, this is, I'm afraid to say, a conversation I think we are going to need to keep continuing with, um, and we certainly will aim to do that well, we also, as was mentioned during that discussion, um, particularly look at the situation of banks and other businesses and their behaviour. Um, there's a great deal to do. The UK unarguably has a very special responsibility here. Um, and it's really important. And I think the attendance of people and apologies that we've had a number of apologies because today, as many days in Britain, has been a very active political day that has dragged people away. But there's a great deal of interest and concern um, about the people of Hong Kong. And I hope perhaps, Pastor Chan, that's something that you'll be able to share, that there is this concern and this interest and be, we'd be able to keep in touch, keep in contact, and we can actually work forward from here. But um, given the time, I'm afraid I'm going to have to close the meeting now. Say thank you very much again to Pastor Chan. Thank you to Chris and the Secretariat team. Thank you to both group of APPGs. And thank you to everyone who's come on the call. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.